Quartermaster's racing clutches are definitely a marvel of engineering. They're incredibly small and lightweight for the ultimate and low rotating mass, yet they can handle a ton of horsepower. But no clutch, no matter how high quality, is going to last very long if you don't set the throwout bearing clearance properly. Throwout bearing that's set improperly will never let the clutch fully disengage or it will never fully engage it. Either way, it's going to wear too fast. Setting your throwout bearing properly isn't hard and we can show you how. Now normally you're going to be doing this in your race car or your hot rod, but so you can see better, I've mocked up an engine on my workbench. If you haven't done it already, the first step is to install the clutch and bell housing on the engine. If you're racing and using a mid plate between the engine and bell housing, install that as well. Everything must be installed exactly as it will be on final assembly. The throwout bearing needs to ride at a specific depth on the transmission's input shaft. Quartermaster sells the support rail for this purpose, but you don't have to use it if you don't want to. They actually provide plenty of washers so you can set the depth yourself. If you don't use the support rail, the inside face of the throwout release bearing will ride on the four bolts securing the input bearing retainer. Remove these bolts and install the necessary number of washers to space the bolt out so that it's 800 thousandths of an inch from the face of the transmission. If you use enough washers, you may need to swap out for longer bolts to make sure you still have plenty of thread engagement. You also may not be able to get exactly 800 thousandths of an inch, but you should be able to get within a few thousandths of that target. With everything set up, you can begin your measurements. Lay a straight edge across the center of the bell housing opening and measure to the edge of one of the clutch fingers. You can get by with a tape measure and a pinch, but a set of calipers will help improve your accuracy. Don't be afraid to do this several times until you get the same depth number, because accuracy is important. The distance comes out to 4 inches, 267 thousandths. This includes the width of the straight edge, but as long as you use the same straight edge for both the bell housing and the transmission, that's no problem. Now, make sure the release bearing is fully compressed and slide it onto the transmission's input shaft. Use that same straight edge you used before and lay it perpendicular across the end of the release bearing to help you measure the distance to the transmission's face. And just in case, measure both sides to make sure they are equal so you know that the release bearing is properly aligned. The distance from the end of the release bearing to the face of the transmission, including the width of the straight edge, is 4 inches 152 thousandths. So to find the release bearing clearance, subtract that from your first measurement on the bell housing. The difference in this case is 115 thousandths of an inch. Now admittedly, we got pretty lucky because the 115 thousandths of an inch of clearance that we had was right in the middle between the 100 thousandths to 125 thousandths of an inch that Quartermaster recommends. But if you find you have too much clearance, the fix is easy. All you have to do is push out the piston and use some of the shims that Quartermaster provides. They've got a variety of thicknesses and you can measure them out to find the right shim stack height that you need. Slide it over the piston. Reassemble the throw out bearing. And repeat the measurement process until you get between 100 to 125 thousandths of an inch of clearance. After that, you can complete final assembly of your transmission and clutch and you're good to go.